My name is Casey and I live in Hawaii along with my wife, daughter, and three happy dogs. Our family is invested in a security known most recently as MMTLP. Although we live in a comfortable life today, we have big dreams, one of which includes owning a nonprofit organization to assist dogs in need. On the weekdays, I work for a small financial planning firm where I can help our clients plan and invest so they can retire comfortably. I've been in the investment field for about 15 years now, and I absolutely love my job. Seeing clients' assets grow to the point where they can achieve their financial objectives are truly amazing. The only thing about my job that I don't really like is the heavy compliance that people in our industry have to go through. Our industry is regulated by FINRA, and almost everything we do is scrutinized by them. For example, in order to be associated with them, you have to go through a deep background check. Besides the routine background check, items like credit, employment, and criminal records checks. You also have to disclose if you work for or are associated with other businesses to make sure that you don't have any conflict of interest. They want to make sure that you're a trustworthy person that's looking out for their clients, which I can understand. Besides making sure that FINRA hires responsible people, FINRA also dictates how we operate as a business. On a regular basis, we take continuing education courses so that we're up to date on their new policies, as well as making sure that we do what's best for our clients. A few years ago, the SEC and FINRA adopted rules to have a best interest standard when working with clients. This meant we have to have a high level of transparency on what products we recommend and how our business operates so that the client is our top focus. All of the policies that FINRA created made sense to me as I would want that level of transparency if I were a retail client. Since I love being in the investment industry, I enjoy learning about various investment policies and looking for opportunities to make money. A few years ago, I heard about how GameStop and AMC's stock price went through the roof on very little news. After a little bit of research, I learned a lot about things like short squeezes, short ladder attacks, maximum pain, and how derivatives can manipulate stocks. Just so you know, most financial advisors and a lot in the industry do not know about these things. Most financial advisors take exams that test you on the basics of investment products and make sure that you understand the rules when dealing with retail customers. Also, most financial advisors are considered asset gatherers in that their main role is to gather more assets under their management. Sorry, getting back to my research. I did a lot of analysis on stocks and bought stocks that had similar attributes to GameStop and AMC. I bought highly shortened stocks and waited for short squeezes, but it never happened. I waited and waited and waited and got frustrated. I decided to look into the mechanics of how trading works and ended up finding things that I didn't expect. Large institutions have a huge advantage over retail in regard to trading securities. First, payment for order flows allows a market maker to route an order as they please as long as the client gets best execution. However, in about 40% of cases, orders go off exchange and don't affect a stock's price. Market makers like Citadel make money off the orders while market traders get the bad end of the deal as their trades can't affect the stock's price since it doesn't go through the lit market. The other big issue with trading is the settlement process. Regulation SHO requires the brokerages deliver shares to buyers within a specified period following a short sale. If the brokerage can't locate any shares, the transaction is marked as failure to deliver or FTD. A lot of small and micro caps have large amounts of FTDs on a daily basis, meaning that there are more shares out there than there should be. This is a huge issue because it causes share dilution and ends up lowering the prices of these stocks. This is important because many of these companies go out of business since they can't obtain the capital needed to run their business. All of this is quite disheartening, but about six months ago, I happened to stumble across the ticker symbol MMTLP. After researching it, I learned that the short position had to close because the security would be converted to a private share of NextBridge. 
after learning that the value of Nextbrig's share was higher than the current value of the stock, my family bought a lot of shares of MMTLP. At best, we were looking at a good short squeeze like GameStop, and at worst, a share of Nextbridge that we believed was worth more than the current stock price. Last November, an announcement was made that the last day to get a Nextbridge share would be December 8th, and that trading of the stock would end on December 12th. Volume and volatility the week prior to December 8th started to pick up, and while the price dropped 70% from December 7th to the 8th, I still thought it was a good position, as the short positions still needed to close. However, on December 9th, I looked at the MMTLP chart, and it said the security was halted by FINRA due to an extraordinary event. I initially thought that the halt would be removed quickly, but it never did. I've spent the last three months writing emails and calling FINRA and the SEC to see if I could get information on the security, but no one would provide me with any information on what the extraordinary event was, nor provide me an update if this would ever resume trading again. After these events, I now have a very different opinion on the investment industry that I work in. FINRA expresses time and time again that transparency in protecting the retail investor is of the utmost importance. Yet they really don't follow the rules they set. FINRA's board chairman, Eric Knoll, is the CEO of Context Capital Partners, which operates a hedge fund. He definitely has a large conflict of interest, as it would seem he would want rules and regulations that protect these large institutions more than the retail investors. FINRA publishes all the stocks that are on the rake show list, yet they don't resolve the issues with the failure to delivers. FINRA is not providing any transparency for the MMTLP halt. No one can give me a good explanation of the extraordinary event nor get an update as to if this will ever resume trading again. I got asked last week from a client if I recommend that they invest their cash in the stock market. A few years ago, the answer would have been absolutely. However, knowing that the markets are heavily slanted against the retail investor, I'm less confident in the answer. FINRA and the SEC need to enact and enforce stronger regulations and uphold to their high standards of market transparency so that retail investors have a fair shot of being prosperous too.